<sighs> hey guys, what's up? And today I'm going to do several small album reviews. Why? Because those albums, I only listen to them for a couple of times and I'm not too familiar with those albums. And I don't have time to write a short, I mean long and deep review and um and I'm lazy, so that's a big problem. So I'm not going to get too deep into the album, but I'm but I really want to talk about those albums. So here we go. Today I'm going to talk about three albums that I don't have enough time to do a in-depth review on. First of all would be Katy Perry's new album Witness, which isn't terrible but somewhat underwhelming. Um again, I don't listen to it too many times. I just only listen to it a couple times, but I'm already pretty underwhelmed. The songs, the music there is pretty ill-conceived, and although Katy Perry is trying to be more adventurous and she's trying to blend in with some 80s electronic music, I guess, it just falls flat and it didn't work that well. And um one of the worst songs on that album is Bon Appetit featuring Migos because Katy Perry is just trying to be wacky and crazy and more mainstream but it didn't work well and then but there is a good song that are actually surprisingly okay which is Swish Swish Ooh, it's hard to pronounce that featuring Nicki Minaj that one was surprisingly okay you know, Katy Perry's new album, Witness, has a lot of unrealized potential, but again, they didn't, they didn't put too much effort into making the music for the album. So, um, I'm thinking I'm giving a, a 5 out of 10 on Katy Perry's Witness. Next would be Harry Styles' album. Harry Styles, self-titled. Um, again... Harry Styles was a member in One Direction, which is not not that good of a band, and I'm not a fan of One Direction. Not that I hate One Direction, but One Direction's music is just it's just predictable and mainstream and and yeah. And this new Harry Styles album, it's it's not that good too. Um, the music is bland and it's expectable. I mean. What can you expect from a from a Harry Styles album? I, I don't know because everything here is pretty much exactly what you think it would be. And the lyrics are really boring. The hooks, the verses, they are really stale. I mean the first half is pretty good. Sign of the Times is really grand, really beautiful. Harry Styles vocals on Sign of the Times is actually pretty good. But other than that, there's not much there's not much to like about this album. Uh Sweet Creature. Sweet Cre Sweet Cre Sweet Creature is pretty good too. And Carolina is okay. But other than that, the second half really falls apart and it's just a boring album. I'm giving Harry Styles new album a four out of ten. Next would be is this the life we really want by Roger Waters? Roger Waters is a former member of one of my favorite bands ever, Pink Floyd. And he hadn't released a new album for a very long time. And this time, he's releasing a new album collaborating with one of the most well-known producers, Nigel Godrich, who is famously known for working with Radiohead, which is my favorite band, uh, so, I'm giving pretty much high expectations for this album. I really like how old the album is, how aged this album is, and I also like like it when Roger Waters is making those political statements, because, you know, Donald Trump is president now, and um, there's a lot of Pink Floyd sound on the album. It's really reminiscent of The Wall and The Final Cut, this album is actually more exciting and more colorful than the final cut. And I also really like the worn out 
quality of the album, which makes it way more artistic than we expected. It's not adventurous. It's not something new and exciting. But the quality of the album is very high. And um, songs like Deja Vu is really good. So, yes, this is a pretty good album. I'm giving Is This the Life We Really Want by Roger Waters a 7 out of 10. Almost an 8. So, have you given these three albums listens? From 1 to 10, how much would you rate these albums? Like if you like and subscribe if you want more. And yes, I will...